The University of Southampton researchers are to play a key role in a pioneering health project. The project will see the researchers scan the bones, hearts and brains of 100,000 middle-aged people. It's in the hope of finding ways to prevent diseases that develop later in life. And joining me to tell us all about it is Nicholas Harvey, who is Professor of Rheumatology and Clinical Epidemiology at the University of Southampton. Thank you very much for coming in, Professor. So, Pleasure. scanning all these hundreds of thousands of people why is why is that going to help? Aren't you just going to be overloaded with so much information? Well, absolutely. It's, it's a massive undertaking. And this imaging study actually forms part of a larger, the larger UK biobank study. So clearly there's a massive burden of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, and not to mention osteoporosis and the associated fractures, which is my own field of interest. And the UK Biobank study was set up a number of years ago and actually recruited 500,000 individuals aged 40 to 69 years wow. over about a three-year period. And you know, that's a fantastically successful undertaking. Um, and what we're, what we're aiming to do now is to go back to those 500,000 people and recruit them to the imaging study. Now, this imaging study will be the largest imaging study that's ever been undertaken, as you can imagine. And what we're doing is to assess people uh, in terms of their hearts, their abdomen, their fat stores, their bones. And that involves, as you say, MRI scans of the brain, of the heart, of the abdomen. Uh, and the bone density scan, or the DEXA scan, uh, will tell us about their bone strength and density. And we put all that together, and that information can tell us huge amounts about the, the risk factors for developing diseases like osteoporosis or heart attacks in older age. How, how are you going to be able to ascertain what the risk factor is? Because surely by the time you've got the image that tells you whether or not they've got the disease, then they kind of already have it? Or Yeah, so the idea is that you do... Um, these people have been characterised in huge amounts of detail at baseline, and that in those 500,000 was about, well, five or so years ago now. What we'll get is a lot more information on those people, and then we will follow them for a period of time, and over 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, new events will accrue. So some people have heart attacks, some people might have strokes, others might develop dementia, other people have osteoporotic fractures. And what we can do is further down the line, we can get information on those events and the studies linked to um, hospital episode statistics and death registries and cancer registries. And we can take the information about the people who have developed the diseases and go back and compare their characteristics at baseline. You know, for example, what was their bone density at baseline? Do they have evidence of cardiac dysfunction at baseline? Um, and look at their blood tests and genetics and see how those factors predict um, the people who develop disease compared with the people who don't develop disease. And obviously, as we all know, kind of lifestyle and healthy living does play a big part in whether we kind of get or are susceptible to these to all these diseases that you've mentioned. How how are you going to be able? Are you also asking them about that in, in Absolutely. this? Absolutely, yes. So, I mean, at baseline, the visit was about three hours long. Um, the imaging visits about four hours long, and, and actually includes a repeat of a lot of the baseline information. And so, we have information on um, diet, lifestyle, physical activity, smoking, alcohol. Whole, you know, the, the whole range of things that might influence... And then presumably the how that changes over time for yeah. if people give up or if they yes, start absolutely. or... So, okay. so, so uh, subgroups of that 500,000 have been assessed again o over time. Um, so we'll get information on change as well. So really this study isn't going to kind of deliver the real results for possibly 20 or 30 years when you've been yeah. able to look back at all these people's lives. Yes, I mean the, the way that it was designed and um, you know, it's overseen by Professor Sir Roy Collins at the University of Oxford and he, he with the, the group that designed the study, really intended it to be a resource that, as you say, would really reap dividends in you know, 10, 20 years' time. But that said, you know, this is a fantastic resource to do cross-sectional studies now. And indeed, you know, as part of the work that I lead with Cyrus Cooper at the University of Southampton at the MRC Life Course Epidemiology Unit, uh, we, we've been using the Biobank cohort to look at relationships between, say, cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis, to look at how, uh, to look at relationships between calcium, vitamin D supplementation and fracture risk and, and risk of, of heart um, events. So there, there's a whole host of things that you can use this for. And other than kind of using the biobank as a resource, what else are you guys at Southampton mm. going to be doing as part of this? Well, yes, yeah, so as I said, the, the work that we do in, in the UK biobank and the, 
um, Professor Cooper and I are, are leading the, the DEXA part of that imaging grant, okay. which has just been funded by MRC. And so will you actually be doing some pounds. of the scans? No, in not, no. I mean, we, we've, no. we've written the protocol and implemented the, the work. But it forms, the UK Biobank work forms part of, of our wider programme of research funded by the MRC at the Life Course Epidemiology Unit. And what we're aiming to do is reduce osteoporotic fractures. And we do that by assessing risk factors across the whole of the life course. So I mean, my particular interest is what happens early in life, so in pregnancy, in early childhood, how that impacts on your bone development. And in fact, we found a range of factors such as maternal physical activity, smoking, diet, uh, which seem to influence the bone development of the offspring, so those factors in pregnancy. Um, and the, the most important factor we've found so far appears to be mum's vitamin D levels. And uh, many of your viewers might be familiar with the Southampton Women's Survey and then the Mavidos Maternal Vitamin D Osteoporosis Study. Um, and, and the Mavidos study is, is one that I've run for the last five or so years. And we've just published the results from that in Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology. And, and actually what we found there was that if you supplement mothers with vitamin D during pregnancy, uh, and then measure the bone mass of the offspring at birth using DEXA bone densitometry. If the babies are born in the winter months, you know, and it's dark and there's not so much sunshine to right. make vitamin D, the supplement actually has a, a, a really quite a marked effect on their bone mass. So that there wasn't any effect overall, but for those winter births, it seems that there's So kind of as the baby is sort of growing and coming yeah. towards nine months there, exactly. but obviously it's darker outside, yes. there seems to be a big impact. So, so in, in that last trimester yeah. of pregnancy... Presumably that, that's, that's when a lot of the bones exactly. are kind of forming so, so that, and hardening. That's when the calcium gets across from mother to baby. Ah. So when that is in the winter months, ordinarily you'd end up with slightly lower bones, but the vitamin D supplement seems to be taking that effect out. And does that kind of carry on through until later life well, if you've got a kind of low bone density yeah. at birth is is that it or there well there is certainly evidence that the poorer you grow and the lower your bone mass is early on in life the lower it's likely to be at peak bone mass which is in early adulthood and the lower it's likely to be in in older age and the, the greater your risk of fracture uh, but what we don't know as yet is whether giving vitamin D in pregnancy leads to long-lasting effects. And so we've just received funding from Arthritis Research UK to do the follow-up of six years. And you know, hopefully we'll, we'll have answers in due course. Professor, it's fascinating stuff. I'm sure we could talk all evening, but we don't have time. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Absolute pleasure.